What's up everybody, I'm Jeremy from Wild Tech Designs and today we are going to have so much fun. We're going to be comparing the Ford Econoline or Ford E series to the Ford Transit. This is going to be awesome. So we're gonna weigh out the pros and cons to both of these vans and help you decide which might be the van that is going to be best for you and what you might wanna choose for your everyday vehicle. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you stick around for this whole video and we talk about all the cool things that WeldTech Designs does for these vans as well as what van do you need? All right, so before we talk about what is going on with these vans, we have to go back and talk about where these vans came from. It was 1960. The United States Senator John F. Kennedy was the incumbent vice president. Richard Nixon was the Republican party nominee. Wait a second, we're not here to talk about politics. We're here to talk about cool cars, really cool cars, like the Ford Mustang, right? No, wait a second, that wasn't until 1964. So we must be talking about the Ford Falcon. Now, nah, that's still not that cool. If you wanted cool in 1960, it was the Ford Econoline. This is when the Ford Econoline first started debuting. Actually, it was 1961, and until 1967, it was this original body style. What's amazing is this van only cost $1,880 and was available in three different models. You had the cargo van, the passenger van, and the ultra sweet pickup van. I mean, how awesome is that thing? I loved it. The second generation Econoline was a heavier duty vehicle that hit the market in January of 68 with an original MSRP of around $3,000. Now, at that price, I might have bought two, especially compared to today's prices of vans. I mean, gosh, the second generation van though lasted until 1974, which is the best year ever, because that was the year I was born. So in 1975, Ford became the first American manufacturer to create a body on frame construction of a full-size van. This, this was difficult. It created a complete redesign with a whole new chassis and a whole new body, which was awesome. And that's why this particular van lasted from 1975 all the way till 1991 without any changes. This van was so popular, it also got really cool nicknames like the Brick Nose because of its really big and blocky front end. I mean, this van was just awesome for so many years. So this Ford Brick Nose was manufactured in Ohio from 1975 all the way till 1991. And the Ohio residents loved their Ford van so much that they even named a town called Vandila, Ohio. I mean, I think that's where we should move Weld Tech Designs. Maybe that would be just awesome. Building vans in Vandila, Ohio? Like, yeah, I'm about that. The third gen van was great and all, but I didn't get to drive those. It was the fourth generation van that I was truly excited about. This van had a list price ranging from $28,000 to $32,000. And in 2000, the Ford Econoline was named the E-Series. Well, in 2008, Ford gave the van another face upgrade, making it look like the ultra popular Ford F-Series front end. And I mean, this thing was a game changer, just looking amazing. I guess that's my opinion though, right? So the Econoline and the E-Series had an impressive 59 year production run. That is awesome. And during its last year of production in 2014, the E-Series sold over a hundred thousand vehicles. I was gonna say a thousand, a hundred thousand. Well, those numbers are impressive. In 2006, it sold over 180,000. Wait, that's not even the best year ever. And in 1998, Ford sold a whopping 206,000 Ford Econolines. The Ford E-Series was the best-selling commercial van in the United States from 1980 to 2014, with the cutaway model still going strong long after 2014. You see those on U-Hauls, ambulances, and of course, the Class C RVs that we love modifying and putting lift kits on. Now, with so much history and millions of vans being sold, how do you come up with anything else that even compares? Well, for the most, nothing will ever beat the E-Series Ford van. For others, the best van may be coming in 2015. 
Now, here in the US, the Ford Transit is relatively new, but elsewhere in the world, this van is nowhere near new. The Transit has actually been around in Europe since 1965. Yes, you heard me right, 1965. These European vans were pretty sweet. However, they looked like a little shrunk down version of the US models, right? Now, with over 3 million in sales since 1965 in Europe, the US looks like child's play in comparison. Currently, they are looking to produce over 300,000 Ford vans in their manufacturing plant in Turkey. Now that is impressive. Now guys, it's time to head back over to the pond, back to the USA and talk about what's going on over there. Well, in 2015, Ford rolled out their new Transit series. Now, there was over 117,000 vans sold in that first year, which is great. Those numbers are astonishing compared to like the Mercedes Sprinter van, which sells about 29,000 units annually in the US. Now in 2016, transit sales jumped to 143,000. And in 2019, they were sold up to 153,000. Now we're getting somewhere. Now we're starting to catch up with this Ford E series. You got nothing. But then 2020 hit and we experienced some crazy event. I'm not sure what it was. And it put a huge hit in sales, bringing in the total number to around 131,500. Wait, that's still pretty good numbers, right? But now there's still almost 80,000 short of the E-Series record sales. Now, maybe after watching this video, you're going to run out, you're going to buy a Transit, and you're going to help Ford get and beat those Econoline sales, right? Now that it's great, you've learned the history of these vans, but now let's get this versus battle started. Let's start by look, taking a look at the interior and exterior of each of these vans. The big advantage that the Transit van has over the E-Series van is all these different roof variations. Like, ah, the Transit is going to have three different roof heights um, and the body lengths to choose from too. Like, gosh, that's great. There's a low roof, a medium roof, and a high roof. Like, which one should you choose? Like, I didn't have a choice when I bought my Econoline. I had one choice. That was it. Well, in 2019, I decided I wanted to be part of this cool new transit van culture. So, Rachel and I headed out to the dealership and searched for the perfect mom van. Now, she decided to go with the regular roof size van because we didn't need the extra space or the ability to stand up inside. Rachel wanted something that was a little bit smaller, it didn't feel like a bus, and that would also fit through the drive throughs I mean, that's super important. You gotta get your Starbucks in the morning, right? And you gotta fit, right? You may want a higher roof, and if you decide to build out your van for van life, this will allow you to move around more freely in the van, giving you more space, which is always gonna be great. Now, the high roof goes up to about 6'4 of interior height, well, the medium roof is only 5'7", so depending on how tall you are, you got the perfect van to choose from. In, in the Econoline, I got like four feet. Like, that's it, four feet. So all that height is great, and it depends if you really want to be able to stand up in your van. But something else to really keep in mind of is for these high roof models, be aware of parking garages, drive throughs and low-hanging branches that just want to take out all the windows on your vehicle. Now those windows do offer a lot more visibility, which can be really great. Another thing is that you see a lot of these high roof Ford Transit vans, but they aren't missing any windows and they're in my neighborhood. I think they're stalking me. I don't know what's going on. I mean, I see them at my house like daily and it says Prime on it. I'm not really sure what's going on there. My wife says it's okay, don't worry about it. So with all those options in the Ford Transit, the Ford Econoline does give you two different options as far as length. You can even get a standard or the extended length, which is going to be really great. It does have the, doesn't have the height that the Transit does. However, you do have some options, like our friends up at Field Vans who put a pop top on my van. It's amazing and I really do love that. Well, if that pop top isn't going to be in your budget, you also have companies like Fiverine who will actually put a fiberglass top on your van, your Ford E-Series van, to give you all that room to be able to stand up in, which is really, really nice. Now, the body is great, but let's really talk about what matters to most men, and that's going to be the engines and these two vans. So the Ford Transit is gonna have three different engine options for you. The first one is gonna be a 3.7 liter V6, putting out a whopping 275 horsepower. The next one is going to be a 3.5 liter twin turbo EcoBoost 
putting out 310 horsepower. Now we're talking. And then in 2020, they offer a new two liter V4 diesel engine. I don't want that. It's like $5.50 a gallon out here in California. So both gas models come with a 10 speed transmission, which is awesome because they say that's gonna be 46 more fuel efficient than the E-Series. But I don't even think I was ever worried about miles per gallon in my E-Series, like never. And it's got a 25 gallon tank, that means the Transit is a better daily driver, right? Now there's several different engines that came in the Ford E-Series van, starting with that 4.6 liter. Like who wants that in their van? Like I'm not getting, I'm getting 15 miles to the gallon. Like, ah, is that really even that good? Now, the 5.4, which was the next van, gets around like 11. Like still, I guess these numbers just aren't impressive, you know? Like, man, I'm gonna cry about that. And in 1997, they thought, hey, why not put an even bigger engine in? Let's put a V10 in it, a 6.8 liter. That's gonna get 11.2. And from 1999 to 2003, the Ford van also got the legendary 7.3 turbo diesel. Now, I feel like the 7.3 diesel was either a love it or hate it. I mean, this was the man's van that could tow your house, maybe even your neighbor's house with it. And even after 20 years, these vans are more popular in, than ever and in high demand. Now, finally, in 2004, there was the dreaded 6.0 diesel engine. Now, this engine got a bad rap due to some issues in order to make it reliable. But there was some stuff that you could do to bulletproof it, to make it better, but it needed a lot of modifications. And some of you guys just didn't want to do that. Now, the most enormous engine in the E-Series vans that put out a ton of greenhouse gas emissions compared to the average vehicle. So if you were concerned about the environmental pollution, you maybe shouldn't have been driving a Ford E-Series van. Now we know this, but we don't care about miles per gallon. We're not worried about that. It's all about looking really cool. It's about smiles per gallon. Your miles per gallon go out the window once you lift your van. But at least you're happy every day driving your van. Now with all those ponies under the hood, they still maintained a three out of five reliability rating which is pretty awesome. Now the best thing about owning a Ford van up until 2014 is just vans weren't cool. Well, at least they weren't cool according to Time Magazine. Now, it wasn't cool at all. So now, why did I want one? Because it was the least likely vehicle to ever be stolen as well. Like the Ford truck who had 28,680 stolen. Now we're gonna move on and let's talk about towing capacity in the Ford Transit and the Ford Econoline. Now it says that my Ford Transit can tow up to 5,300 pounds, which would be nice, but it sucks. I think the Ford Econoline is definitely gonna take the win here with the E250, which says it's capable of towing 7,500 pounds and the E350 7.3 diesel coming in at 10,000 pounds. Yeah, that's why it's towing your house. So I do a lot of towing with both of these vehicles, owning them all. So I'm going to tell you when I drive that 3.7 liter, I'm just not impressed towing. And I really makes a big difference too. If you've added larger tires to it, you're going to really have to consider doing gears in it as well, because it's really going to just diminish the overall power that those bigger tires have taken up. Now I'm gonna tell you the same thing goes with the Ford E-Series, but by having that larger V8 in there, and having that more torque, it's going to help tow a lot, lot better. That is my two cents when it comes to towing. Now, let's talk about something else really important about the Ford Transit versus the E-Series, and that's gonna be the frame versus the unibody. Now, frame versus unibody, this is something really important, especially if you're going to be towing a lot of weight. Now the E-Series has a full frame under the body and what's more impressive is all of the frames are going to be different on these vans. Now the E-150, which is gonna be the smallest of the van, is gonna have a five inch frame. It's going to get bigger on the E-250 to about six inches and on the E-350, it's gonna come in at seven and a half inches. Now, of course, adding this extra frame is also going to make this van a lot heavier, 
which is one reason why it probably didn't get the best miles per gallon. So you would think when it came to building a better van, Ford would go bigger and stronger, like they've done with their Ford trucks, with the F-Series trucks, with the Mustangs, with so many different vehicles. Well, that was not the case at all for the van of the last 53 years. Instead, it was like we got a slimmer, sleeker, more politically correct van in 2015, right? And actually the Ford Transit never even went to the frame shop in 2015 either. Well, when it comes to changing the frame, there was a complete redesign of the suspension as well. Dude, the I-beams were sick. Why do you change those, right? So as we talk about suspension, oh yeah, suspension, another topic that just gets me excited. Now there's horsepower and suspension, like those are the two words that get real men really excited, right? And if that didn't get you like, yeah, there's plenty of Prius videos on YouTube. So thanks for hanging out with us this long, okay, thanks. And because I'm a real man, this is where the fun part, where I'm really, really gonna get excited. Now both of these bands have two completely different suspension types. And as a result of that frame versus unibody rant that I just kind of talked about and blew over because I just am not excited, but you know, I can't even say that without thinking about like a me with a unibrow because unibrows and unibody, I feel like it's almost like all the same thing. Now the Ford E-Series has had a twin I-beam suspension which was even equal length up until the 80s. I mean, that was when it was really, really sick with a kingpin front end and just, yeah. Now the I-Beam proved to be great setup as well as it was used for all kinds of Ford trucks plot on the Ford F-Series truck platform as well. Especially with the popular debut of the Ford Ranger, the iconic Bronco, the F-Series, like man, I-Beams were it. And people love this unique design. It was great for getting a lot of wheel travel out of trucks, especially when it came to desert racing. And that is what I love. When I built my first truck, I knew that it had to be a Ford and it had to be an I-beam truck because I wanted to get the most wheel travel out of it for those amazing trips down to Baja. And racing Baja, it was definitely essential. But with any great thing, there will always be a negative. Now there was definitely, you know, not some fans of the I-beam setup as well, because with that one single pivot, it created big camber change in off-road racing. And that's not bad, but on the street, it's probably not ideal for tire wear. It makes things worse when it comes to the stock applications, they make the radius arm completely a different length than the I-beam. So then it just travels in like this double R craziness. Like, ah, you know, like, so now you get mag a caster change and you get camber change as your wheel cycles and now I've just confused you guys even more. So, ah, yeah. So to make things even more crazy, we're gonna put two different unequal I-beams on it as well. So now your steering is gonna change and it's just funky and crazy. Like who designed this? Like a mad scientist that was just like, ah, but I'm gonna get mega wheel travel and it's awesome, right? So with that, you get a little bit of adjustments. You can get a lot of wheel travel. However, there are ways to make it awesome. And that's where WellTech Designs come in, building these amazing lift kits for your Ford van, for your motor home, and yeah, now even for your Ford Transit. So now we took all the good parts that came on that Ford E-Series and proved them with some of our fabricated parts, like extended radius arms, new brackets, which make them more equal length to the I-beams, but with bigger coils and better lead springs in the rear, we've created a recipe for one pretty sweet van. Now, after all of that information, I think I'm gonna take a break right here because now we have to talk about the Ford Transit suspension. All right, well, thanks for being patient. I had to go drink like six Red Bulls right now to get excited about talking about this Ford Transit suspension. Now, from a guy who loves suspension and designing really cool new things, this one is gonna to be tough because there are so many restrictions in the Ford Transit compared to the E-Series when building suspension. There's also a lot of rumors about how the Ford Transit got its new suspension design. Now we may truly never know about that historic event, but what we do know is that Prius became part 
of the Ford Transit in 2015. With also with its unibody design and strut suspension, it's here to stay, just like your delightful mother-in-law. All right, so let's jump into this Ford Transit and let's take a look at these components. Now the lower arm, the knuckle, and it has a large shock that has a coil spring on it and we're gonna call that thing a strut. Now that is very similar to the I-beam suspension that came on the E-Series where there is going to be a lot of camber change as the wheel goes up and down. Now it's gonna be less dr drastic and that's really because it has less wheel travel than the E-Series. Now the Transit van may never be a van that you see racing the Baja 500. I don't know, maybe that's a challenge, but you will see them all over Baja enjoying the scenic routes and beaches in various versions of the family hauler to the camper conversions to the overlander, which is going to be really great. Now the Ford Transit has become one of the most popular vans to build with less maintenance than some of the other high roof vans. All right, guys, so that was a ton of information, a little bit crazy and overwhelming. You know, I mean, that was just, Ah, and we have never done a video like this, so I definitely would say, what did you think of it? We put a ton of time into it. Do you wanna see more videos like this? But what I really wanna see is how this Ford Transit and Ford Econoline compare in the real world. We have both of these vans. We've put lift kits on them. We're gonna take them out. We're gonna have some fun towing with them, really see fuel economy and Maybe even head to the desert with both of these and see how far we can go before we get stuck. I don't even know. Maybe we need to hit a Mojave Trail. So, yeah, I think that's all I got for this video. I hope that you enjoyed hanging out with me for the last 20 minutes. I didn't put you to sleep and that you want to come back for more. So, if you do, smash that subscribe button down below. If you found this video informative, you made you chuckle once or twice, you know, give it a thumbs up. And like I said, comment down below. I want to know how a van has changed your life or why you want a van. And if you want a van, which one do you want? Let's see who wins this uh, versus video series in this. Uh, this is like round one. So I'm Jeremy from Well Tech Designs. I will see you guys in the next video.